Hello and welcome to INE's CCI Service Provider version 5 Learning Path. Today in this course we will talk about MPBGP which is multi-protocol BGP. If you look at traditional BGP, it only supported address family for IPv4. There was no address family for IPv6 or even uh, address family for IPv4 multicast space. It only had address family for IPv4 which was unicast. So with MPBGP which is multi-protocol BGP, we can now have multiple address families. I believe it actually supports up to 15 address families. We have address family for IPv4 unicast, we have address family for IPv4 multicast, IPv6 unicast, IPv6 multicast, we have VPNv4. So it does support a lot of address families. Now for MPBGP to, to be able to support all these different address families and to be able to identify them, it basically adds a few attributes in the new MPBGP which is the address family identifier, which is AFI, which is used to identify your address family. It also has um, the, um, a subsequent address family identifier, which could be for sub-address families inside the primary address family. Besides that, it also has B uh, BGP capability advertisement. So both the routers are going to advertise to each other what capabilities they support. So if I'm supporting IPv4 or IPv6, I would let the remote neighbor know that I support these uh, address families. If you don't want to support them, you can discard or ignore those messages. So to demonstrate, in fact, MPBGP, what we would do is we would take two routers. One is going to be an iOS XZ router and one would be an XR router. So I would take two routers, R6 and XR1. Both these routers have been pre-configured with an IPv4 address and also an IPv6 address. We will first establish an IPv4 BGP neighborship, which means address family for IPv4, and exchange IPv4 routes. We would then establish address family for IPv6 and exchange IPv6 routes. Let's try this out. All right, so I have R6 here. If I do a show IP interface brief, I have my IPv4 addresses. This is the link that connects to XR1, and I have a loopback. If I look at my interface, gig619, I also have an IPv6 address pre-configured. Even my loopback has an IPv6 address pre-configured. Similarly, XR1 also has been pre-configured with interfaces. This is the link that connects to R6. It has an IPv4 address and an IPv6 address. And I also have a loopback which is pre-created with an IPv4 and an IPv6 address. So let's build BGP, IPv4 address family, between the two routers. I'll start with R6. So router BGP, let's use AS number six, and let's disable all the address families because by default, uh, address family for IPv4 gets activated automatically. But if I give the command no BGP default IPv4 unicast, it basically disables all address families. You have to manually go and activate all address families. So even my IPv4 would basically be disabled. So let's give the neighbor statement. I would establish the neighborship on the physical interface, which is the directly connected link between the two routers. That's going to be 20.6.19.19. Remote AS, let's keep that as 19. And let's also advertise my network. So that's going to be address family, IPv4, unicast. And I need to activate the neighbor, otherwise my neighborship would not come up. So neighbor would be 20.6.19.19. Activate and then advertise the network that you want to. Let's advertise my loopback, 6666. Mass, 255.255.255.255. So if I look at my BGP configuration now, I should have just one address family at this point of time where I have address family for IPv4 I am advertising my loopback and the neighbor is the IPv4 IP address of XR1. Let's now go to XR1 and uh, configure this as uh, with BGP. 
So router BGP 19. Address family would be IPv4, unicast, and let's advertise my loopback 20. Dot, uh, in fact, it's 19.19.19.19 slash 32. Exit out. Neighbor would be 20.6.19.6. Remote AS was 6. Address family IPv4. Unicast. And finally, I have my commit statement. So if I look at my show run router BGP, you would see that I am advertising my loopback. I have the neighbor statement, remote AS, and I have activated address family for IPv4, which means R6 and XR1, they should establish IPv4 BGP neighborship. Let's verify that by doing a show BGP IPv4 unicast. So, I have my local route in the BGP table. Let's do a summary just to verify if my neighborship came up. So I do see my neighbors up, but let's do a show BGP. I'm not receiving any routes. If you remember, the reason you would not receive routes on XR1 would be that by default, there's no route policy attached, which means if you are an eBGP neighbor, you would not accept any routes from that neighbor. Similarly, XR1 is not going to send any routes to R6, so we do require a route policy. So let's create one. So route policy, let's name this pass. And no conditions, just the values are going to be pass and end policy. Go back to router BGP 19, neighbor 20.6.19.6. Address family IPv4, uh, unicast, and here I would give my route policy pass in and also out. So accept all routes inbound, which means when you send me a route, I will accept them and I will send you my routes also. Let's do a commit. Now R6 should see XR1's loopback, show IP BGP. He does see the loop back and look at the next hop. The next hop is my physical IPv4 address, which is the neighbor XR1. Similarly, XR1 should see show BGP IPv4 unicast. I should see R6's loop back and my next hop is R6, which is the physically directly connected interface. Should I be able to ping between them? I should be able to ping between both loop back to loop back. And this is, so I'm not really running MPBGP at this point of time, I'm just running address family IPv4. But to, for me to run address family IPv6, if I have both my address families, that could be MPBGP, which is multi-protocol BGP. I could run a straight address family IPv6 with the neighbor as an IPv6 address, or I could run uh, address family IPv6 with neighbor as an IPv4 address. Let's first do a ping between these two routers. So ping 6666, sourcing from my, my own loopback, which is 19, 19, 19, 19, and I do have reachability through BGP. Let's now add um, address family for IPv6, and maybe we can use neighbor as an IPv6 address. So on router 6, Go back to BGP and address family IPv6. Or in fact, I would first give my neighbor statement. So that's going to be a global statement. So neighbor is going to be XR1's IPv6 address. So show run interface gig 0000.619. This is the IP address, IPv6 address of XR1. Go back to R6 and say neighbor IPv6 address remote AS would be 19. And then activate your address family. So address family IPv6, unicast, and again, neighbor would be the same neighbor. I need to activate my neighbor. And finally, I can advertise my own loopback. My own uh, loopback should be 2001, double colon, 6666 slash 128, so network would be this.
So if you look at my BGP configuration, I am now running two address families, IPv4, and my BGP neighborship is IPv4, and I'm also forming IPv6 address family neighborship with an IPv6 neighbor. So two separate address families are being run at this point of time. And I'm also advertising my loopback. Let's do the same thing on XR1. So router BGP 19, address family IPv6, unicast. Let's advertise my own loopback, which should be the same as XR1, except the network would be 19. So 19, 19, 19, 19, slash 128. And next thing that I would do would be the neighbor statement. So neighbor is going to be our sixes IP address of the transit link, which is gig 1.619. That should be my neighbor on XR1. Remote AS would be six. Let's also do a commit. Or oh, in fact, let's activate the address family also. So address family IPv6, unicast, and uh, once I've activated that, I should be sending him routes or receive routes from him. But one thing that you must remember is because the neighborship is an eBGP neighborship, I should still have the route policy for my address family IPv6. So let's attach the same route policy that we had earlier we don't need to create a separate route policy for IPv4 and IPv6. I could use the same route policy, which was route pass. So route policy pass in and pass out. Let's do a commit. If I go back and verify my BGP neighborship, show BGP IPv4 Unica summary, I do have IPv4 address family neighborship, and I should have IPv6 neighborship also between the two routers. So I do have the neighborship and I'm receiving IPv6 routes also. Let's do a show BGP IPv6 unicast. So I have received the, the route, the loopback of XR1 from XR1 and my next hop is the IPv6 address of uh, XR1. Let's try a ping between them. So ping XR1's loopback, sourcing from my loopback, and I am able to ping. So this is multi-protocol BGP when I am running two separate uh, address families for IPv4 and IPv6. Now there is another way also to do this. So let's say if I did not really want to establish IPv4 and IPv6 neighborship between the two routers, I only want to establish an IPv4 adjacency between the two routers, but still be able to exchange IPv6 addresses, which can also be done. So for doing that, we have to go back to our address family IPv6 and remove the neighbor statement, which was for IPv6, and instead give an IPv4 neighbor inside address family IPv6. Let's try and do that. Show run section router BGP. I would go back under my BGP, keep everything the same, and inside my address family IPv6, or in fact globally, I can just remove this command. It should remove my address family inside address family IPv6. So it should remove that also. Let's do a no. So I don't need the remote neighbor to be there. If I look at show run section router BGP, now I just have one neighbor, which is IPv4. My address family IPv4 is still the same. I haven't changed that. But inside my address family IPv6, I would now give the neighbor 20.6.19.19 and activate. Exactly the same thing I would do on XR1. So let's go back to router PGP. And here the changes that I would make would be under router BGP 19, let's remove this neighbor completely, so no. And I would have 
go back to my IPv4 neighbor and here I would give address family IPv6 unicast and attach my route policies inside that. Let's do a commit. So if you look at my show run router BGP now, I am running just one address family. In fact, I'm running two address families, but one neighbor, which is IPv4 neighbor. If I go back to six and do a show BGP IPv4 Unica summary, I am IPv4 neighbor. And if I look at my show address family IPv6 Unica summary, I am IPv6 neighbor also, but my neighbor address is an IPv4 address. So I'm not using IPv6 anymore as my neighbor. And instead, I'm using an IPv4 address for establishing address family IPv6. But there's one problem when you do something like this, when you have IPv4 neighbor inside address family IPv6, your next hop is going to be an IPv4 address because my neighbor was an, was an IPv4 address. So if your next hop is an IPv4, then the problem is going to be from reachability perspective because we are not doing a six to four conversion. IPv6 is not being converted to, to IPv4, so my ping would not work. Let's in fact see that. If I do a show BGP IPv4 unicast, I have IPv4 routes and I should have IPv6 routes also in my table. But look at my next hop for, for this route. In fact, this should change to IPv4. Let's go and do a clear IP BGP star and just wait for the BGP neighborship to come back up. So I have received our uh, XR1's loop back as IPv4. My next stop is an IPv4 address. And if I look at IPv6, my next stop for the loopback should also be an IPv4 address, should not be an IPv6 address. But we will go and check why do we see that. Show run route policy. What do we have? We have pass. This is just to pass policy. Let's do a show run router BGP. So I have under my neighbor address family for IPv6, I have advertised my loopback. I have only one neighbor, which is the IPv4 address, and I've activated both the address families. Let's check here also, show BGP IPv4 unicast, which is correct, and IPv6 unicast. I see, in fact, an IPv4 address. Since I see an IPv4 address, it's going to be a problem. From iOS XZ perspective, it wasn't a problem because your XR1, when he sends the update to, to uh, iOS XZ, which is router 6, when he sends an update, he's actually changing his next hop to himself because it's an eBGP update, and he is using an IPv6 address. This is, the, this is the address of the transit link or the link between 6 and XR1. He's automatically doing that. However, when R6, which is iOS XZ, when he sends the update to XR1, he is using the IPv4 address, not the IPv6 address. The reason you get something like this is just because of the different behaviors of different products. So. Uh, an iOS XZ router will use the neighbor's address as the source when he sends the update. Since my neighbor address was an IPv4 address, he sends that as a source. So that becomes my next hop for XR1. But XR1 is using the IPv6 address on the interface and sending that as uh, the next hop automatically. That's why on R6 I see the next hop, which is correct. But on XR1, I am still seeing 20.6.19.6. What's the problem going to be in that case? I'm not doing a 6 to 4, uh, which basically means that if I try to do a ping to 6666, 
sourcing from 19, 19, 19, 19, this will work. This is absolutely no problem. This is IPv4 end to end. But if I try and ping the loopback IPv6 address loopback of R6, which is this one, sourcing from, from this address, which is my address, my loopback, this ping would not work because my next hop is basically not reachable and I'm not doing a six to four. So to make this work, we would have to go back to R6 and maybe use a route map and maybe set the next hop to an IPv6 address and send it out to XR1. So I could do this on R6 or I could do this on XR inbound when I receive the update from, from uh, R6, change the next hop to R6's IPv6 address, not the IPv4. So either I could do it inbound on XR1 or I could do it outbound on R6. It achieves the same thing. Let's try it on R6. So what I would do is create a route map to XR1, permit sequence number 10, and say set IPv6 next hop to my own IP address, my own interface IP address, which would be do show run interface gig 1.619. So this is my IP address. So set the IP next hop to my address and then go back to router BGP 6, address family IPv6, and here I would say neighbor 20.6.19.19, route map to XR1, which is my route map name, outbound. Let's do a clear IPv6, or maybe I can do a, in fact, I don't, I don't even need to do a, a clear. It should happen automatically. If I do a show BGP IPv6 unicast, my next hop should be an IPv6 address. Let's go and clear, because maybe it didn't take effect. So clear IPv6 BGP. And also, in fact, we can do a hard, hard reset. That clears all my BGP neighborship, IPv4 and IPv6. And when, once XR1 receives the update now, for IPv4, it would, be a, it, would, it would basically be an IPv4 address for address family IPv4. My next hop would be IPv4. And for address family IPv6, my next hop would now be IPv6 address of R6. That should make my ping work between the loopbacks. So we are still waiting for the BGP neighborship to come back up. So my neighborship just came up between uh, 6 and XR1. So if I look back at my BGP, look at my next hop now, my next hop is an IPv6 address of R6, which basically means that if I do a ping now, IPv6 to IPv6, my ping should work. So this is basically running multi-protocol BGP when I'm running IPv4 address family and IPv6 address family. You could run IPv6 address family with the neighbor being an IPv4 address or the neighbor being an IPv6 address. If your neighbor is an IPv4 address, you must be careful about the next hop. The next hop should be an IPv6 address, not an IPv4. If you want to keep it as IPv4, then you require 6 to 4 to be done. I hope this video was informative to you and thank you for viewing.